Here I've got the number one and number two best-selling under-sync reverse osmosis systems on Amazon, the iSpring RCC7AK and the Apex ROES50 Essence. Both are super affordable, around 200 bucks, and look almost identical at first glance, but do they perform the same? We fully tested both installation, daily use, and independent lab analysis for contaminant reduction and potential chemical leaching to find out. And what I can say, we've got a clear winner. One of these two crushed it in the lab, while the other, not so much. So if you're looking for a budget RO system and you don't wanna waste your money on the wrong one, stick around, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Sarah from BOS Water, and today we're comparing the iSpring RCC70K and the Apex ROES50 Essence. Both are pretty standard under sink RO systems, tank based, no pump, with the usual setup sediment and carbon pre filters, an RO membrane, and a carbon post filter, except the iSpring also adds a remineralization alkalinization stage. And they're super popular on Amazon and highly affordable, not just upfront, but long-term. So on paper, they seem very similar. Now, as with all our water filter reviews, we ran independent lab testing to see real world filtration performance. And we'll cover how the filtered water tasted and smelled, plus how easy both systems were to install, use, and maintain. All right, let's start with our lab testing. Once both systems were installed and primed according to the instructions, we sent paired tap water samples, so one unfiltered and one filtered, to an independent lab to see how the impurity levels changed. Now, quick disclaimer, before and after testing isn't an exact science. There's always margin for error. Things like cross-contamination can happen, and we only tested a single unit of each using our own tap water. So think of this as a snapshot, not a final verdict. With that said, here's how the APEG ROES50 Essence and the iSpring RCC7AK performed. Both removed 100% of chlorine, all four disinfection byproducts, copper, barium, zinc, nitrate, and uranium. The APEG also removed all aluminum and lithium. Now we didn't detect lithium in the iSpring's unfiltered water sample, so we couldn't calculate a reduction rate, and it shows as not tested. We also didn't detect aluminum in the iSpring's unfiltered sample, but we did detect it in the filtered sample, which could suggest potential leaching. That said, the lab report listed just a tiny amount, 0.03 parts per million, 20 times below the strictest aluminum health guideline that we could find. So in other words, we're not concerned about it, especially since the amount of aluminum you ingest through food is much higher. That leaves us with strontium, fluoride, and boron. For strontium, the APEC achieved 98% reduction and the iSpring 94%, so a negligible difference and almost perfect results. For fluoride, 67% for the APEC and 78% for the iSpring, so the iSpring did a bit better here, but again, just a small difference. And finally, boron. The APEC achieved 40%, which isn't great, but still far better than the iSpring, which may have leached it into our water since the levels more than tripled according to the lab reports from 0.05 ppm to 0.17 ppm, a 240% increase. 0.17 ppm is still below the strictest boron health guideline. We could find at 0.5 ppm, so it should impose a health risk, but it's also not too far off, so not exactly reassuring. Also not reassuring, the 0.02 ppm of vanadium that the ice spring may have leached into our water, for which we couldn't find a health guideline, but apparently, you shouldn't consume a whole lot. So all in all, while the APEG ROES 50 Essence performed really well on contaminant reduction with no signs of chemical leaching, in fact, so well that it could even compete with higher priced under sink ROs we tested, the iSpring RCC 7AK had almost the same reduction rates, but with some potential leaching that did affect its lab rating. And if you're wondering about overall TDS reduction, we calculated 94% for the APEC, which is outstanding, and 87% for the iSpring, but that lower number on the ice spring isn't a performance issue. It just uses a remineralization and alkalinization post filter that naturally raises TDS. Speaking of that, it's the biggest difference between the two systems, but it looks like it didn't add a whole lot of magnesium back into our water compared to the average magnesium level of the six under sink RO systems we tested that don't use remineralization. For calcium, we saw a more noticeable increase, but it was still below the WHO's minimum recommended level for drinking water. And while alkalinity barely reached the 30 ppm threshold, the pH came in very high at 9.72, which shows why focusing on pH alone 
can be misleading. That said, our remineralization data reflects the shortest possible contact time between the water and the media to keep testing consistent across all systems. In additional testing, we found RO systems restore more minerals if they sit unused for a while because the water has time to pick up minerals inside the cartridge. So in other words, remineralization depends on design and how you use the system. And based on our findings, the iSpring RCC7AK performed similarly to the six other remineralization undersink ROs we tested. By the way, if you want to dig deeper, there's a comparison sheet linked in the description. It includes our filtration and remineralization data with lab reports, and plus our full analysis of the APEC, the iSpring, and 23 other RO systems, undersink and countertop, along with product links and disk count codes. So if you're shopping and want to save a few bucks while supporting our work, check it out. And if this video has been helpful so far, we'd really appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Okay, back to the APEC and iSpring. Aside from our lab testing, we also look at NSF certifications for contaminant reduction and any extra test data the companies provide. The APEC ROES 50 Essence carries a single certification under NSF standard 58 for TDS reduction. Unfortunately, APEC doesn't publish any contaminant reduction data at all, not even for TDS. The iSpring RCC 70K has the same certification, NSF 58 for TDS, but there's also the RCC 70K BLK, which seems to be the same system except with a black faucet. Now that one actually goes a step further and is certified for the reduction of asbestos, barium, cadmium, chromium-3, copper, fluoride, lead, and selenium, and the listed reduction rates for all those are really solid. On top of that, iSpring has also done its own in-house testing for arsenic-5, cyst, and turbidity reduction. So long story short, when it comes to certifications, the iSpring RCC 70K pulls ahead of the APEG ROES 50 Essence. And finally, for filtration, both RO systems produced water that tasted and smelled perfectly clean. And so the iSpring earns a filtration score of 3.39 out of 5, whereas the APEC earns a much higher 4.42 out of 5. So filtration goes to APEC. Great, how about usability? Both systems are easy to install and very similar in setup. You drop in three pre-filters, connect the feed water adapter to the cold water line under your sink, install the drain saddle, mount the faucet on your countertop, which might require drilling a hole, prepare the storage tank, hook up all the tubing, and turn on the water supply. For priming, the ice spring has you let the faucet run for about 30 minutes, then fill and drain one full tank. With the APEC, you can skip that first step and just fill and drain the tank once before use. Now, we did run into a couple of small issues. With the iSpring, one of our filters leaked at first because of an oversized O-ring, but that was easy to fix using one of the backups that came in the box. We also felt that the feed water valve on the iSpring was a bit flimsy compared to others we've tested, including the APEC. On the flip side, the Apex feed valve leaked too, apparently due to a missing gasket, and we couldn't fix it. So overall, build quality between the two ended up about the same. For everyday use, both are simple. You just open the RO faucet and dispense. The iSpring faucet is one of the heaviest and sturdiest we've tested, and Apex feels solid too. In our flow test, both systems filled a one cup glass in about 4.5 seconds, which is very fast. That was with a full tank though, and flow naturally slows down as pressure drops. The iSpring provided 2.8 gallons before the faucet slowed to a trickle, and refilling those 2.8 gallons took just over an hour. The Apex delivered three gallons in about an hour and 24 minutes. Both are more than enough for larger households, but your actual output will vary depending on your water pressure. We tested at around 70 PSI, so if yours is lower, you'll get a slower filtration, less water stored, and weaker faucet flow. The iSpring also includes a leak detection valve, which is a small plastic piece you install on the tubing between the feed water adapter and the system, usually taped to the bottom of your cabinet. If a leak happens, the disc inside absorbs water, expands, and automatically shuts off the flow from the feed valve, which is a nice touch. That brings us to filter replacements. They're not difficult on either system, but since both use traditional filter sumps instead of modular cartridges, there's a bit more manual work. You'll need to shut off the feed water, release pressure by opening the RO faucet, 
unscrew the filter housings, replace the cartridges, and then screw everything back together. The filter wrenches you need for this are included with both systems. One nice perk on the iSpring is the clear sediment filter housing. It lets you see when the cartridge is getting dirty without having to open it. Where both systems are the same is that there's no filter life indicator, so you'll have to track replacements manually. All in all, we rated the iSpring's usability at 4.75 out of five, while the Apex scored slightly lower at 4.5 out of five. Although it doesn't affect the scores directly, we also ran a wastewater test. With the tank shut off, the iSpring drained about 1.25 gallons for every one gallon purified, while the Apex wasted around 2.31 gallons per gallon purified. Under normal use, we estimate roughly three to four gallons wasted per gallon of purified water for the iSpring and five to seven gallons for the APEC. It's a fair bit of waste, but still typical for non-pumped RO systems. Before getting into costs, let's quickly look at third-party customer feedback. Overall, both systems have overwhelmingly positive reviews. For the iSpring, the most common complaints were leaks from the faucet, filter housings or fittings, occasional issues with customer service, and missing or faulty parts. For the Apex, the biggest issue was also leaking, mostly from the filter housings. A few people mentioned cracked housings and questioned the build quality. But compared to the ice spring and other under sink ROs we've tested, the Apex didn't strike us as particularly low quality. All right costs. Right now, the iSpring RCC7AK is around $240, depending on where you buy. The APEC ROES50 Essence runs about $200 to $230, also depending on where you buy. If you order from APEC's own website, you can get 5% off with a filter subscription. We don't have a discount code for either one at the moment. If that changes, we will update our comparison sheet. Either way, both are highly affordable with the iSpring's remineralization stage explaining the small price difference. Warranty-wise, both come with a one-year limited warranty and Apex can be extended to two years when you register. Annual filter replacement costs. Based on the rated lives of the sediment and carbon pre and post filters, the RO membrane and the remineralization and alkalinization stage, we estimate $100 to $110 per year for the iSpring. Using the same method, we estimate $75 for the APEC with an optional filter subscription that takes another 10% off. You could go off brand on cartridges since they're standard size, but with prices this low, it doesn't make much sense. Bottom line on costs, iSpring earns 4.76 and APEC earns 4.99. For the final score, filtration weighted at 60%, usability and cost at 20% each. That puts the iSpring RCC7AK at 3.94 out of five and the APEC ROES50 Essence at 4.55 out of five, making the APEC not only the clear winner of this comparison, but also our number one budget under sink reverse osmosis system. And that's it. So here's a summary. Both the iSpring RCC7AK and the APEC ROES50 Essence are traditional tank-based under sink ROs and among the most affordable options at around $200 to $240. Installation is straightforward for both. Overall build quality is solid, though both had minor valve or O-ring issues that caused small leaks. Both removed most contaminants to 100% with only a few exceptions. In some of those, APEC performed slightly better and in others, iSpring did. The APEC showed no signs of potential leaching while the iSpring did for boron, vanadium, and aluminum all below health limits. The iSpring's remineralization and alkalinization stage raised pH to 9.7, but added only small amounts of calcium and magnesium below WHO recommended levels. Remineralization performance depends heavily on contact time and usage. Both systems are certified under NSF standard 58 for TDS reduction. However, APEC doesn't publish any contaminant reduction data, not even for TDS. The iSpring, on the other hand, goes a bit further. Its RCC7AK BLK variant carries additional NSF certifications for things like asbestos, barium, fluoride, and lead, and iSpring even shares their own test data for arsenic-5, cysts, and turbidity. Filtered water from both tasted and smelled perfectly clean. Everyday use is easy with fast faucet flow and plenty of water for larger households. The iSpring includes a leak detection valve and a clear sediment filter housing, both handy. Filter replacements require some manual effort and neither system includes a filter life indicator. Wastewater ratios. For the iSpring, we estimate three to four gallons wasted per gallon purified. APEC, five to seven gallons typical for non-pumped systems. Customer feedback for both is very positive. Most common complaints are minor leaks or missing parts. Annual filter cost, 
APEC, $75 or 10% less with subscription. iSpring, $100 to $110. Both include one-year warranties with the APEX extendable to two years with registration. Overall ratings, the iSpring RCC 7AK rates 3.39 for filtration, 4.75 for usability, and 4.76 for cost for a final rating of 3.94 out of 5. The APEC ROES 50 Essence, 4.42 for filtration, 4.5 for usability, 4.99 for cost for a final rating of 4.55 out of 5. Bottom line, the APEC ROES 50 Essence outperformed overall with stronger filtration due to no leaching and slightly lower costs. All right, remember to check out our comparison sheet for the full breakdown of the APEC ROES 50 Essence, the iSpring RCC 70K, and 25 RO systems in total, including our discount codes. It's all in the description below. And as always, if you have questions or want us to test a specific filter, drop a comment. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you won't miss what's next. Thanks for watching.